All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Hanging out with Casper right here. Hi, big fella. And uh, you know, a big one that people often ask is how old is Casper? And I've done a ton of, uh, you know, shorter form videos saying that we don't actually know. But I do wanna delve into greater detail on why don't we know and why can't we figure out how old they are, right? And so, you know, again, the short answer is we don't know how old, how old he is because their size has to do with diet and environmental factors, not on how old he is. And one of the quotes I always use is like, in his case, we could literally say that he is 50 years old. We could say he's 120 years old and nobody can tell me anything different. You can't tell me one of those is right or one of those is wrong because we have no way of actually determining it. And this is something that is often used by charlatans by, uh, I wouldn't, I don't want to like say any names, but you would not believe how many like Everglades guides and airboat captains and people like this that are always like, oh, that alligator over there is 32 years old, blah, blah, blah. And all the tourists are like, oh, wow, okay, cool. Because there's no way to tell, so you can't tell the guy he's wrong. <laughs> and as long as you say it with confidence, everybody just believes you. So you could just be like, Casper here is 57. And as long as I say it with confidence, no one can tell me I'm wrong because you can't tell how old he is. And so it's kind of like this really weird, awkward situation right there. Um, but let's talk about normal growth rates, okay? So in a normal situation, he, he loves eating these things, by the way. These are the seeds uh, from this fig tree above me, and he's just eating these things all day. And uh, if you didn't check out my vegetarian alligator video, go back and watch that. Yes, they do actually eat fruit on occasion. He does like to eat these things. But anyways, so normal growth rates in um, alligators. So what they typically say and again, these are all generalizations. I'm gonna to get to in a minute why these are generalizations, but they do typically say is that a baby alligator typically grows about a foot a year for the first like five years of its life or so, okay? And that number can vary depending on who you're talking to or blah, 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 that kind of thing. And uh, the reason why is because again, it does depend upon diet and environmental factors. And so in alligator farming operations, they do what's called power feeding. And this is where they can get a baby alligator to grow to be five or six feet long within just like a couple short years. And so they can just blow them up again. This is called power feeding. Gets them really big in a really short amount of time. Now the inverse on that would be situations where you have a captive uh, raised alligator as a pet that has a horrible diet and, and a stressful environment. Again, these animals are not pets. They should never be thought of as pets. Unfortunately though, people do keep them as pets. And this is a situation where we will see an alligator that is 30 years old and it's only four feet long. And obviously that is really, really bad. Um, and that just, God, I, I, can't, I can't stress enough like how sad it is to see these pet alligators that have stunted growth. And you know, again, are like 30, 40, you know, 20 years old, whatever. And they're like three or four feet long. A uh, big one was uh, gator. If you guys have been following me for a while, this alligator saw that I helped uh, rescue from Missouri and she was someone's pet. And uh, she was only like five feet long and 20 something years old um, with like her face of really bad metabolic bone disease. Her mouth only opened up about this much. Her teeth would go out instead of down. Just all these numerous health issues and complications due to poor captive care. Thankfully, she has a forever home here at Everglades Outpost now, and uh, they're taking great care of her here. So I took care of her for years, and then they've taken over her care now, and it's really, really awesome. And just just because I've had people asking about this lately too, um, by the way, I do not own Everglades Outpost. I have been volunteering here for a long time, but I don't own the place or any of the alligators here. So uh, now uh, Saw is being under her care. Uh, here at the outpost. But anyways, we'll get Casper back over here. Casper, come. He's over there chewing on those seeds again. But yeah, so that's a really good exhibit though of improper captive care causing a really shortened alligator. And so that is really uh, exemplified and compounded in captivity, but it can also happen in the wild too. You can have a wild alligator that uh, undergoes various difficulties in its development, whether that is um, poor diet, if there's not a lot of food in the area or a very stressful environment, it's not just food. You can feed him the best food available and if he's under a very stressful environment, then it can stunt their growth. 
what's a stressful environment? It can be a lot of different things. It can be socially stressful. Like uh, alligators can be in competition with one another. They can be territorial, even the little guys, even the little babies. And so if he's picked on excessively by the other alligators, it's gonna stunt his growth. Or if um, it's really inclement weather, you know, environmental stress is what we say, but that can take all kinds of forms. You know, it can be bullying from cohorts. It can be, again, excessive heat, excessive cold, excessive drought. That's another really big one that's very common for alligators. Casper, come here. I'm gonna get him back over here so it's not just me talking. But um, but yeah, the uh, lack of water can be another really big one too that can affect their growth if they're in an area that dries out or uh, anything along those lines or a lack of available food, a lack of a variety of food. If there's only one kind of food, then they can have nutritional deficiencies. And so all these uh, various things are going to affect the growth rate. So that's why when we look at him, we don't know how old he is because his size, again, is not related directly to the age. It is that stress and environmental factor thing, right? Now, that begs the question, what's the longest lived alligator? Who's the oldest alligator on record? And currently, the oldest one right now is an alligator named uh, Muja, who is in a zoo in Serbia and Belgrade Zoo at 85 years old. And so that's currently the oldest and uh, thought to be the oldest on record. Another one um, was, in fact, uh, Hitler's alligator, which it wasn't actually his alligator, but apparently he spent a lot of time with this alligator and would go and watch it all the time. So it kind of got the, the moniker of Hitler's alligator. But anyways, that gator uh, got to be 83 or 84 years old. And uh, that's after surviving the wars, surviving bombings. I mean, just crazy stuff. Obviously, that's environmental stress. Um, and both these alligators are relatively small too, by the way, they're not very big, which again, leads into the environmental stress thing. But that's also, these are alligators that are living in Europe where it's obviously not the best climate conducive to alligator growth. And so they are limited in their size and likely in their age as well. They're not gonna really reach that full capacity of age because of these stressors and whatnot. Casper, come here. I got a, uh, George is helping me on the camera right now and Casper went behind him and George is like, like trying to hold the camera steady and like looking around, making sure Casper's not creeping up on him. Cause he will, you gotta watch him. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely right to be, always be aware. Always wanna be watching him. That's why we try to keep him up here and in the center of the frame. Come here, buddy. Get you back over here, huh? Come here, come here, buddy. Good boy. There you go. Where's a good boy, huh? But um, but anyways, yeah. So those are the longest lived alligators right now. Obviously, due to their environmental complications of being in an area that's like not alligator habitat naturally in Europe, it's going to affect their growth and it's going to affect their age as well. I mean, these environmental stresses like we just explained, affects growth, obviously it's going to affect lifespan as well. You're not gonna reach your full potential lifespan if you're extremely stressed the entire time, right? So it's going to affect them in both ways. Now, this is why we don't really know how old alligators can get. And this applies to crocodiles too, by the way. Everything I'm saying so far, alligators and crocodiles, I should have prefaced that, but either way. So with the alligators, as far as how old can they get, we don't really know. And that's because in order to know, we would have to be able to determine their age, which we cannot do as previously stated. So how do we know how old an alligator is? The only way to know is if we know his birthday. How do you know? You just ask, I'm kidding, of course. But how do you know is you would have to know when that alligator hatched out of the egg. And the only way to know that is if you do in captivity, you identify that specific animal with its hatch date, and then you know it throughout the entirety of its lifespan, or if you did mark recapture studies in the wild and that'll give you a good estimate on their, um, well, not an estimate, it'll give you an actual, uh, you know, number on their age and whatnot. And so to break that down, how do both these things work out as far as determining their longevity? So if you did the captive one, the problem with the captive care idea is that we don't have proper captive care. Even in the best AZA, that's uh, American Zoological Association facilities, and that's like the top tier of zoological care, even in the best zoo facilities, those crocodilians still exhibit metabolic bone disease. I see it myself all the time when I go to visit other facilities. So even in the best captive care, they're still exhibiting MBD. And so obviously that's gonna affect your lifespan right there. And our best captive care sucks. Sorry, it does. Uh, and most places, zoos I go to, even amazing zoos, I look at it and I'm like, this is not proper alligator habitat. Like they're doing their best, don't get me wrong, they're doing their best. But a lot of them have improper uh, habitat setups in many different ways. I don't wanna, 
I don't want to like get into like trashing zoos or anything like that, but a lot of them do have improper captive setups or they have improper diet or here's the other big one is let's say they are at the top of their game on all things to be able to make their health the best it can be. That's only going to have happened in the last couple of years or the last couple of decades as we have learned what they do need. And we still don't know everything. We still don't know everything that they need. But let's say we are at the top of that tier. That's only going to have been being done for the last few decades. And we have an animal that can, as we know, at least be 80 years old. We would have to have an animal 80 years ago hatched out and had proper captive care from that starting point to be able to give it proper full longevity, which obviously 80 years ago, captive care for almost all animals was horrific and abusive and just garbage, right? So that just sucks all the way around. So you would have to have had that proper captive care the entire time. Now, yeah, he's, uh, Casper just sank under for a second. He's got something in his teeth he's trying to get out. He's not actually going down, but uh, there, he's back up again. But anyway, so you'd have to have proper captive care throughout the entirety of his, let's say, 100 year lifespan to be able to have a proper idea of how much longer they could get, that doesn't occur, that doesn't exist. Um, so then we would have to have long-term monitoring programs of mark recapture studies in the wild to give us an idea of wild longevity. And that's a project I've worked on. I've actually gotten to be a part of that working with the University of Florida. And uh, I was there for several years working for the croc docs, going out and capturing wild alligators and crocodiles and tagging and marking them, releasing the babies uh, during the baby season. And then during a different time of year, catching as many adults as we could and checking them for tags and then putting tags in them as well. And then releasing back on the wild. And so those are really fun times. I got to work on those projects uh, going out. Like we literally leave at like three or four in the afternoon and get home at 10 a.m. the next day, all night out there on an airboat, catching alligators and crocodiles, weigh, measure, tag, and release. And it was so much fun, guys. One of the most fun things I've ever got to work on was doing those uh, studies and just contributing to science like that was so cool. But anyways, back to this topic though, we would have to have those mark recapture studies going on for longer than a hundred years, which they have not, unfortunately, right? So those have only been going on for you know several decades, but not a hundred years. And in that case, that's gonna give you the wild lifespan, which is great. That's valuable data, we need to know that. But the wild lifespan, theoretically, is going to be less than what their actual maximum capability would be in captivity under optimal standards. Because you gotta think about what's a human's wild lifespan was like, 20 to 30 years old, okay? You know, you don't live very long out in the wild. It's rough out there. So uh, these guys, obviously, they say their wild lifespan is around 40 to 50. That's the number that I've seen purported several times. Um, so 40 to 50 is kind of the norm. But as we know in captivity, even in improper captive care, we get them over 80, okay? Now, so those are the two methodologies, methodologies of which we would be able to learn their actual lifespan. And those are some of the inherent problems in such. So let's get into what are the unverified claims of their age. So like I know one guy, he says he's got a crocodile that's 100 and I think 127 years old, um, but it's not scientifically verified. There are other people who claim to have crocodiles or alligators over 200 years old. Now, the thing with this whole situation is it's not done by a scientist and it's not evaluated by scientific method and so people just throw it out as irrelevant then and it's not irrelevant the problem is that we often especially in western science we discount traditional uh how do you want to say it? i don't want to say traditional like beliefs because these are people who are like oh well i know that alligator or crocodile my dad knew him and my granddad knew that same and his father knew that same animal so you have multiple generations of people claiming to know the exact same individual alligator or crocodile. And most people hear that and they just throw it away. They're like, yeah, whatever, what, what do these yokels know? You know, like these are people that live in the bush. What do they know? They know a lot. And we often discount and just throw away their information because it didn't come from, you know, modern science. And we just discount it. And it's really sad. It really, really, really sucks. But as someone that has worked with traditional, uh, indigenous groups before, I also know there's a lot of mythology as well. And there, people do make mistakes. And so sometimes these people are absolutely correct and sometimes they're not. And so how do you know? You're just taking somebody's word at that point, right? So you have to take that situation at face value and choose, do you want to believe this person who says they have multiple generations knowing this animal and these over 200 years? 
Or do you just say, oh yeah, well that guy was also just drinking a whole lot of alcohol and uh, I don't know if they're exactly factual on what's going on there, right? So you run into the situation of what you wanna believe or not. So in that regard, it does get to where if you're choosing to believe people, you know, and that, that's really what it comes down to because there's no written record and there's no uh, obvious photographic or video evidence. So it's just whether or not you wanna choose to believe these people. And uh, sometimes, also animals become legendary over many generations you know and once they become legendary and there's like a whole mythos around that specific animal things get exaggerated things get blown out of proportion it's just human nature you know that's what people do so that's why like generally a lot of these accounts are just attributed to being incorrect and you know mythology basically um but i think that we throw away you know like the throw out the baby with the bathwater kind of thing we throw away a lot of good information just because we're like oh well it wasn't done scientifically whatever those people don't know what they're talking about and it, it it just really sucks, you know? And that relates not only with age, but also with size. You know, there's so many communities and like so many stories of just massive alligators and crocodiles over 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet, you know, like just crazy. And some of them are crazy. Some of them are truly, you know, mythological and not correct. But through the fossil record, we're very aware that a lot of these crocodilians got a lot bigger than they do now because we kill them all. It's really sad, you know, so we end up killing all these animals as they get big. The bigger and more impressive an animal is, the more of a magnet it becomes for some insecure person to want to kill to compensate for their lack in manhood. And it's just so sad and depressing. So we have seen uh, across many different species from elephants to alligators of animals becoming increasingly smaller over the last few decades because the big ones all get killed and their genetics are being removed from the gene pool as trophy hunters want to kill the biggest and best of everything. It's horribly depressing. And that's a whole different, I could go on about for an entire episode on that one, but basically just the idea there is that we discount again a lot of indigenous tales of very, very large animals because we don't see them now. And we have this very myopic viewpoint of if it didn't happen in the last couple of decades or within my lifetime or somebody I know's lifetime, then it's irrelevant, it's not real, and it's just mythos, you know? And that really sucks because a lot of those are often real. A lot of them are also, you know, embellished, but some of them are real and we don't know which is which. And I think a lot more studies should be done into that and looking into the veracity of these claims and trying to take them more seriously. Um, but anyways, the point of the matter is we don't know how old Casper is, okay? That was a 20 minute way of saying we do not know how old Casper is. But either way, he's doing awesome now and hopefully we have him around for many, many more years. Uh, but because again, we don't know how old he is, we might not, we have no idea. He could be close to the end of his lifespan. That's something I do think about often that is really sad and depressing to think about. Um, as far as we know, he's doing pretty good, but you know, we just don't know. Um, and uh, hopefully as we have these long-term monitoring programs going on for marker capture studies in the wild, in the coming decades, we get a much better idea. And with better vet care and captive care, we get a better idea of their entire lifespan and captivity as well. So hopefully you guys learned something in this video. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And as always, like, subscribe, share, and we'll see you guys next time.